Could it be this? Do you say that? That certainly conjures to mind a Turkish charmer, my lord. One of the uh, feminine gender your father encountered in Istanbul. She was what is euphemistically known as a belly dancer. Uh, maybe try the B side. Welcome to Men's Nipple Digest. I'm your host, Shaky T. That's T-E-A, not the letter T. I am the 2014 Southeastern Asian Champion Airbrusher of Men's Nipples into Icebergs. And I am joined, as always, by the legend himself. The man who invented men's nipple landscaping lithograph procedures, penmanship, I'm talking about Craig. <laughs> Correct. C- call me call me Snake Nipples. <laughs> you know, I took a long time to think of that, and it turned out <laughs> terrible. Awesome. Hello, and welcome to Hello, This is the Doom Show. I am Richard. Folks, I've already uh, broken the peaks of my recording levels at least <laughs> twice since we got started, because I'm that excited. I am joined by Jeffrey. Hello, Jeffrey. Hello, Richard. Good to be back. Yay! It's been a while. I know, technically. Not for listeners, I don't think, but for, for us. No. A while. No, I, I had that uh, that frickin' uh, Flesh Eater episode stashed away for like <laughs> two years. <laughs> Yay! It was perfect. It was uh, just the right amount of aging. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I'd say we're timeless. <laughs> I'm timed. I'm time out. I'm in time out right now. <laughs> yes. Jeffrey, you've been busy. You've been doing something very special, and I would rather care to for you to discuss mm. it, please. Okay. Well, uh, I've been uh, doing another podcast in all of my copious downtime, of which there is actually none, but somehow I'm still doing this. Uh, so if you enjoy my voice on this podcast, you should certainly think about maybe checking out this other podcast, which is about something totally different. Not movies, but things with words in them. Books, in fact. Um, But don't worry, they're books for, like, babies. Uh, We read, uh, on my show, Super Chillers, we read retro YA horror novels and thrillers from the 80s and the 90s. You know, we're talking your Fear Streets, the uh, R.L. Stein, the uh, the Christopher Pike, the uh, assorted other sundry things that you saw on like supermarket racks aimed at teenagers who wanted a little bit of a cheap thrill, but not too well, definitely cheap, but not too uh, not too smutty or adult. Uh, so it's a it's a fun show. I do it with my friend Katie. We uh, make a lot of jokes. If you like my jokes, oh boy, you'll get even more of them there. What a fix. And you know what? It's free. <laughs> how can you How can you turn away something free? Did your mother teach you nothing? Uh, you can find us on any podcast platform. Well, I, that might not actually be true, but definitely most of the big ones. Just search for Super Chillers. You'll find us. Uh, we have, we're a monthly show, so it's not much of a commitment either. Uh, we've got three episodes out now. Oh, no, that's probably not even true, because I have no idea when this is coming out. Um, let's say we have a number of episodes out now, so yes. you can dip back into the uh, back catalog and uh, catch up with us. Yeah, I am 
a huge fan of Super Chillers. It is totally outside of my wheelhouse. And uh, <laughs> so I have not read a single book, even yeah. though you guys give <laughs> notice of what's coming up. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to listen to this episode, not having a clue. Um, I do have a book on my shelves that uh, we'll talk about mm. after this. I'll grab it because I... It's buried behind some stuff, but we'll talk about a. I have a request that um, if it fits in within y'all's wheelhouse, maybe you'll uh, you'll take a listener request and any time. Yes, we do we will do Bram Stoker's Lair of the White Worm just for you. But you guys have a <laughs> great freaking chemistry. The um the outfits because of course your co-host uh, she is very fashion mm-hmm. oriented, and yes. so she's um hyper focused on the clothes that that are described in these freaking books and they are and, they are really something let me and now you. she's drawing she draws them up too right correct yeah 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 she does these incredible drawings mm-hmm. of of the outfits and i'm like how much deeper could you go <laughs> into these books and that's pretty deep i'm loving it well we'll show you how deep we can go uh pretty <laughs> deep it turns out yes uh, <laughs> yeah, awesome. but we, we definitely uh, pride ourselves on uh, making sure you don't have to read the books. So don't uh, don't be afraid to just pop on in and give a listen. We'll Great. get you up to speed. I'll keep doing that. Cool. <laughs> and I'll have a link to Super Chillers on this episode so you folks can check it out, please. Thank you. Y'all gonna go viral or uh, hashtag hashtag Soup Kitchen. Wait, hashtag I don't know soup why. kitchen. I don't know why I said that. I don't know. <laughs> we have a listener request. Um, our pal Holly, listener Holly, aka Pocket Full of Sass, she said, I would love it if you and Jeffrey would do <laughs> the layer of the white worm. And I said, Well, let me ask. And you you said, <laughs> No. <laughs> what? I did not no, you say said that. Yes, absolutely. I said yes. enthusiastically, yes. Man, I, I'm trying to remember the last time you and I covered anything that was, like, this British. <laughs> or this good. <laughs> what? What do you mean? <laughs> of course, yes. Layer of the White Worm, directed by Ken Russell, 1988. King Ken. Um, this is some hot stuff. And we're going to spoil the whole thing, so please go watch mm-hmm. it. I'm assuming this has a Blu-ray somewhere. It does, from uh, Vestron uh, Video. Oh, nice. Of course. I was watching uh, Trailers from Hell. The dude from, uh, who's talking about Vestron video. I should have known. Should have known. Yep. Yep. I'm not saying I, you know, didn't watch that Blu-ray. Mm. All right. Well, I did. It looks great. I'm glad, I'm glad you did. <laughs> I, I also watched the menu on repeat because it plays the uh, the Danton Worm song, uh, which is a bunch of times, which is just great. I love it. Holy shit. Yeah. Oh, man. We'll talk about that song. I have found a wonderful trailer for this movie, and I'm going to drop it in. It's got some nice, some nice corny voiceover guy doing his thing, and I'm always up for that. So here's the trailer for The Lair of the Lair of the Worm Worm. There is a legend of an ancient evil. Something's been found in Stone Rig Cavern. A legend that no one would ever believe. Legend has it that Stone Rig Cavern was the lair of the Dampton Worm. Unless, of course, it came right up and bit him. Ah! One, two, three, four! I hear you're having trouble with a snake. Lion was a pig snake god. I'm snake watching. As if they were just swallowed up. John Dampton went out fishing once, out fishing in the weir. He caught a fish up on his hook. He thought, look, mighty queer. Now what the kind of fish it was, John Dampton couldn't tell. But he didn't like the look of it, so he threw it down a well. Ha! Well, you mustn't take the word worm too literally. It's an adaptation of the Anglo-Saxon virum, meaning dragon or snake. Ah, uh, the experience of a lifetime. Now the worm got fat and growed, and growed an awful size. With great big teeth and a great big mouth and great big goggle eyes. So John set out and cut the beast and cut it into halves. And that soon stopped it, eating babes and sheep and lambs and cows. Yeah! From the director of Altered States, and creator of Dracula, a new movie of venom and vengeance. Ken Russell's The Lair of the White Worm. I'm famished. We stop on the way for a bite. Oh, 
Watch out for your ass. Okay, um, here is the plot synopsis from the back of the VHS tape of The Lair of the White Worm. In 17th century France, Father Urbain Grandier send, seeks to protect the city of Loudun, Loudun from the corrupt establishment of Cardinal Richelieu. Hysteria occurs within the city when he is accused of witchcraft by a sexually repressed, repressed nun. nun. You know I was going to make a, a devil's yeah. reference. Well, it's, cause... it's fair. I mean, there are parts of this film that do look a little bit like the devils, just well, with, like, with snake creatures. Yeah. Like uh, outtakes on a blue screen. That's great. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, folks at home, in case you don't know, Ken Russell's The Devils is one of my gong movies where I must follow some super fans of uh, Ken Russell's The Devils because it comes up in my feed literally every day. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm on Twitter or on uh, frickin' uh, Facebook with all my movie people. Y'all love that frickin' movie, dude. <laughs> Release the uncut version, you cowards. <laughs> Release the frickin' the Snyder's Release cut. Release the Snyder cut of the devils, you cowards. <laughs> There'll be some more slow motion and some needle drops. Oh, yeah. imagine Oliver Reed, like, moving in slow motion. Yeah, I just did it. Now I need a break. <laughs> now I need to be alone for a while. No. Uh, the actual VHS tape of Lair of the White Worm goes like this. A host of stars gather together for this new critically hailed film from the master of the bizarre and terrifying Ken Russell. Starring Amanda Donahue, The Rainbow, Sammy Davis, A Prayer for the Dying, comma, Hope and Glory, Catherine Oxenberg, TV's Dynasty, and Hugh Grant, Maurice. <laughs> Somewhere in England's beautiful peak district, there is a legend of an ancient evil. A legend that no one will ever believe. Unless, of course, it came right up and bit you. The story of a woman vampire who can turn into a snake will have you in hysterics in this new movie of Venom and Vengeance. Does it really say that? Hysterics? It literally says hysterics, Whoa. which... Is incredible, but we are going to totally talk about this plot here. Um, I took now that now I have this paper that was ripped out of like um, the story of my life book that we had, and so there's a lot of um, like wasted space, but I still have five pages of notes. Holy moly. <laughs> So uh, we'll just we'll do, do some summarizing. We'll do a little summarizing to save save our sanity, maybe. <laughs> I have about twelve sentences. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> hey, this could all be ten sentences. You don't know. <laughs> oh. Uh, the film opens with a nice hole in a in a rock or in a mountain. Mm. It just looks like a, a hole. Maybe uh, um, you could call it a a, a cave. Yes. In the uh, the cosmology of the film, I guess it's also a vagina. <laughs> of course. <laughs> That's Ken Russell talking. Yeah, yeah. Woo! Uh, we see a uh, <laughs> my favorite thing in every movie we've ever covered on this show. Archaeologists in fingerless mittens. Yeah. Because you got to get up there and touch the bones. Um, I just realized that was Peter Capaldi as Angus. Just now? Just literally just now. I'm like, oh. British man, looks familiar. He's a doctor. Excuse Ooh. you, Scottish man. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. They do make a lot of Scott jokes in this. Uh. I should have I should have remembered that. Uh. I'll I'll uh, embarrass and annoy all of our UK listeners starting Absolutely. <laughs> 30 seconds ago. <laughs> uh, so yes, our our pal Angus here, Angus Flint, played by Peter Capaldi, he has found a boner. <laughs> Excuse me, a bone. It's a very big a, boner. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Unusually um, large. <laughs> it is a skull, which, according to the trivia, was a cow skull with uh, some uh, extra parts glued onto it. Oh, was it really? I yep. thought they just fabricated the whole thing. That's an impressive job. I like it. So while he's doing his work, he's trying to be to archaeologize like you do, and he's got a freaking peanut gallery of uh, <laughs> Mary and her sister Eve. This is uh, Mary Trent, played by Sammy Davis, not Junior. <laughs> no, this is the and... this, is, this is his father. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we got uh, Catherine Oxenberg as Eve Trent, her sister, and that's Catherine Oxenberg, 
Jr. as well. Mm, yep. Yeah. Hey, come on. <laughs> well, they're just chatting away, and this is one of my first moments in this movie where I, where I wrote, this is uh, a lot of dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. It's good dialogue, though. It's very, like... It's all uh, fun. It's very fun and funny. Um, is, is it worth taking notes on? Not so much. I took a couple. Like, ooh, uh, at ooh. one point, uh, I... So one of them, I, again, it goes so quickly, it was hard for me to note, like, who said what. But it was either Angus or Mary who refers to the skull, the cow skull, and say, sexy beast, ain't he? <laughs> I like that. And then one of the, the sisters, I think it's Eve, uh, yes, runs yes. away, says, ah, me spotted dick. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, that is um, a common thing, apparently, is, uh, you know, dessert. Yeah. spotted dick but what is it i've had a just disc- i know i've heard what it actually is multiple times in my Hold life on. i, but I don't British remember answer. lietta what the hell is spotted dick it's uh steam pudding oh it's a steam pudding steam pudding and it's what? spotted because of like the fruits in it yeah it's the fruits yeah the fruits it's got some uh <laughs> And it's it's dick because that's what you just call pudding <laughs> <laughs> do you know why it's called dick Nope. <laughs> yep. There's probably not a good explanation. There. It's just it's just cock shaped. Whatever. And I do mean a chicken, of course. Uh, I do a want rooster. to pause for a moment to to note that the director of photography on this film is a person named Dick Bush. Hey, we know him, <laughs> right? Do, do we? Maybe that name is. I mean, obviously, <clears throat> you don't forget a name like that. <laughs> but ooh, the fan, 1981. Mm-hmm. He did. Oh, he did Crimes of Passion. I've heard that's a fun one. That's a great one. Uh, he did Sorcerer, Tommy, Phase Four, um, frickin' uh, The Legacy. Okay. Yeah. There's some good stuff there. Hell yeah. I have the novelization of The Legacy. I should probably read that one of these days. You should, yeah. Dracula mm. 80, 72, Twins of Evil, Blood on oh Satan's God. Claw. Oh, boy. I didn't go back far enough. Oh, boy. Dick Bush. <laughs> that's one good Dick Bush. Yeah. Uh, we find out that Mary's parents are, are presumed dead, but, you know, they never found their bodies. Mm-hmm. And uh, just so you know, there's a lot of worm imagery in this movie, <laughs> among other types of imagery. There's a mm-hmm. there's a hose that uncoils that actually, like, freaked me out a little bit because mm-hmm. I, I don't know if I've seen a white, opaque hose yeah. for your garden before. And... um it's unsettling looking. <laughs> yeah. I'm not comfortable enough in my masculinity to have that thing waving <laughs> around my yard. Come on, that's freaky. Yikes. Uh, he finds, our pal Angus finds some Roman coins, um, and apparently dinosaurs and Romans don't mix. No. Well, except for this one emperor who was really into worms. Yeah, the rogue emperor. I did not write him down. <laughs> the rogue emperor. Uh-huh. Or something. It was, I swear. I no, I, a Star no Wars they, they did say that. Absolutely. Okay. I just think it's a very funny idea. That's the one bad emperor. He went off book. <laughs> he uh, was full of metachlorians, that guy. <laughs> uh, so that night, they're going to a party. And uh, I wrote down, there's a band of some kind. I call them Irish Clash. <laughs> I, I did look it up for a second. I was like, is this the Dropkick Murphys? Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, uh, Hugh Grant refers to them as a uh, rural rock band. Uh, they're very rousing. It's it's a little bit bluegrassy. I mean, basically everybody's hoeing down. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's Irish punk. Yeah, it's very very like Irish traditional music by way of punk. So Dropkick Murphys or um, there's another band I can never remember. This is this is the opposite music for my tastes. <laughs> Like, I appreciate the, the guy's energy, and of course, I love uh, um, the fiddle player. She's just she's yeah, killing it. Killing it. But uh, this is the kind of music that um, repels me, like a, like the opposite side of a magnet. <laughs> See, like... nor- normally, I would entirely agree with you, but this one, this one's a banger. Dude, it's about a worm. It's about a fucking huge worm. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> but this party is really elaborate. Um, there's a giant party worm. A mm-hmm. white worm that there's people. It's so long. There's like six to eight people actually operating this thing. Yeah. And like chomping <laughs> on party guests who are laughing. <laughs> and it is. Oh, my God. And of course, they're calling it the Dampton Worm, which we'll talk about all that Dampton worminess. It is based on a real, uh, a real uh, 
tall tale, mm-hmm. uh, folk tale about the Lambton worm, mm-hmm. which uh, of course this this movie is based on the novel <laughs> Lair of the White Worm yeah. by uh, good old uh, Bram Stoker. Brom. And, Brom. And man, I was just reading the wiki of this plot. Like, you think this movie's crazy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the plot of the OG novel is even weirder. And I now want to read it because it sounds nuts. Yeah, you even have to be careful because there is an abridged version that was published pretty soon after the original version came out that, like, cut 11 chapters out of it. Um, oh, because even like his publishers were like, this is ridiculous. He, he published it the year before he died. And apparently his like faculties were failing. So it is uh, mm. a very long and strange novel that bears only very basic similarities uh, to this film. Uh, I guess Ken Russell read it. Like Ken Russell had wanted to do a Dracula. Uh, but Vestron's like, no, do this one instead. And so he did Layer of the White Worm, but he read the book and he's like, this is terrible. Uh, yes. let, let me just cha- let me take the structure vaguely and play around with it. And he kind of just makes Dracula, uh, which is fine. Yeah. According to the uh, the the dude, the producer in that Trailers from Hell episode, uh, is it Dan something? Dan somebody. He's uh, that's good. That's good fact checking. Um, he, he said <laughs> that like Ken Russell like came up with most of the script in like four days. And I'm like, that's that sounds like something Ken, Ru- Ken Russell would yeah. do. Like, is he wanted to make um, not a horror film, the the Rainbow that film he did after right. this, but the studio said uh, we just made a shit ton of money off of the VHS rentals of Gothic. Mm-hmm. In order to do your your big uh, artsy movie, uh, your dream project, you must make us a horror film. Mm-hmm. And he's like, okay, fine. Yeah, and of course he killed it. <laughs> he did. Do you, yeah, you've seen Gothic? Oh God, yeah, years ago, long time ago. It's been. I have not seen it with fresh, fresh eyes. I'd love to watch it again. Yeah, I haven't seen it in a handful of years as well. Um, that's a really good one. I actually feel like that's a lot less of a horror movie than this one is. Like he definitely goes for broke in this he one. Doubles down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, all right, you want horror? I'll give you horror. I think it's about layering in uh, cold weather. Go thick. Ooh, go thick or go home. Go thick or go worm. <laughs> Oh, thank God you made that a tolerable joke. I appreciate that. That's great. Speaking of worms, one of my favorite details about this party is the uh, the pickled earthworms. Yes. That uh, that um, uh, our boy Angus is chomping down on as he's meeting <laughs> the Lord of the Manor, Lord James Dampton, played by basically unknown Hugh Grant at this point. Yeah, he's yeah. very dashing. I feel like both Peter and Hugh are, are very dashing in this film. I would. I don't know if I call it great chemistry. Their characters are kind of like at odds with each other a little bit. Uh, yeah. But they do. Um, when we get down to the Sherlock Holmesiness of the the story, well, yeah. <laughs> when they start trading theories, man, this shit gets crazy. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hugh Grant. He says uh, he'd said in later years that um, he's really embarrassed by this movie, and uh, perfect, perfectly said. He didn't know if it was meant to be funny or scary. <laughs> and I'm like, you're a dumbass. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's meant to be both, I think, pretty clearly. And um, I, I don't I mean, think yeah. he should be embarrassed by it. I think he acquits not himself very well. He's, he's it's great. It's a Ken in the movie. Russell film. Like, yeah. Like, what, you, did you not know who you were working with? Have you seen The Devils? I mean, <laughs> look at my Twitter feed, brother. <laughs> yeah. Love it. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hugh Grant is the he's the ancestor of the OG Dampton who slayed slayed the worm and um he makes a chastity belt joke because apparently the the housemaids are getting into trouble. <laughs> we never see a housemaid of his. No, he just we're... he just has like the butler. Yep, the butler and, and imaginary housemaids. Uh-huh. Which is funny. He, when he has his dream later about uh flight attendants, <laughs> he should have had a few uh nursemaids running in or True. housemaids running in to help out mm-hmm. mary and angus go walking home they take the creepy shortcut and this is where she talks about her parents who who disappeared without a trace that this was a shortcut they used to always take home from the manor house and then they were just whoosh, gone over a year ago i think and uh, she also talks about how her boyfriend died in a freaking motorcycle accident and this prompts angus to just give her a big old kiss <laughs> Like, that's my moment. <laughs> I need to attach my kiss to her dead boyfriend's memory 
and I'll get laid. But a boom. But then they're interrupted by a creepy car. There's a snake-like car with green uh, headlights that scares her. And fangs. So weird that it has fangs. That's fine. Isn't that all cars? Uh, Gotta go install my fangs. I'll be back. (laughs) I'm just polishing mine. Uh, There's a cop uh, waiting for them in the kitchen. And this cop is P.C. Ernie. This is uh, Paul Brook. This British actor I have seen so many times. He, I believe, judging just based on looks, (laughs) I believe he has a glass eye. Which makes uh, an, a certain effect we're going to get, a special effect with him later. Probably Whoa. a lot easier for them to do. Okay, so he is most well known as the Rancor Keeper in Return of the Jedi. Nice. That's crazy. Okay. That's incredible. Wow. That's amazing. Awesome. <laughs> but love yeah, that. we love that we, for him. <laughs> Liet and I watch a lot of British shows, a lot of British movies. So yes, we've seen him over and over and over again. He's a very prolific dude. Mm-hmm. He reveals that they found her dad's watch and nothing else. But they found it in that cavern, that famous hole in the rock from the beginning of the movie. England's vagina. (laughs) The old British mud hole. He goes to investigate the manor house based on the the, uh, car that they saw sneaking around. And he calls up his fellow officer for backup because he sees lights on in the manor house. And... uh, (laughs) The officer on the other end of the phone is, of course, <laughs> Ken Russell in a cameo. Oh, is it really? Yep. And the <laughs> comedy's great. It's just great stuff. And where he just he can't go because he has the car and he can't take a cab because they arrested the only cab driver in town for being drunk <laughs> driving. His bicycle tires are flat. He can't pump up them because the pump blew out. It's great. It's just stupid. Oh, boy. Uh, and as he's uh, he's snooping around on the grounds, he gets stung by a snake. And we, I don't think we... Do we see anything? We did not see. Just, okay. We did not see. I mean, he clearly was, but he also gets, like, lambasted for saying that a snake stung him. <laughs> yes, because we have a very uh, a snake enthusiast. <laughs> yes. He's approached by Lady, Lady Sylvia Marsh, who's uh, played by Amanda Donna, Donahoe. Ooh, and talk about an MVP of this movie. Dude, she's amazing kills it yeah i mean she from her opening moment in the film to the end just straight up looks like a snake and they're not doing anything to her she i mean they, there are times when they make her look more like a snake but they didn't even need to she's just like a snake woman uh, it's amazing <laughs> uh so you know who they offered the part to first right I did. Tilda Swinton. Yes. Right? Tilda Swinton. Ken Russell sent her the script and she didn't return his phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's the thing. I love Tilda. I think Tilda would have been fine. I think sure. that this was just the movie for Amanda Donahoe. Yeah. Totally. Uh, she's so good. Oh, my God. She. Yeah. I mean, she took this opportunity and went completely crazy with it. Mm-hmm. And she's better in this than she is in L.A. Law. She's better in this than she is in Adamant music videos. What? This is where she played. She played Kara Jean or CJ Lamb on LA Law or just called La La. La La. La La. La La La. Yeah, she is. She is amazing. So she was in Adamant music videos. I think that's where she was like discovered. Yeah, she was. uh, She first came to attention as a 16 year old living with pop singer Adamant. Oh, no, a different time. And she appeared in uh, two of his uh, hit music videos. During their four-year relationship. Mm. Oh, okay. wow. Well, she probably It's probably good that she got out when she did. Mm. <laughs> he has some issues, but he's <laughs> fine. He's probably fine. Her opening outfit here is bonkers. I mean, she she's in various stages of undress for most of the rest of the movie. Yes. Um, but here she's wearing this all-white, big hat, long jacket. Uh, she's got like a, a scarf thing to, like tied around her head. Uh, it's amazing. Definitely outfit of the film. <laughs> she she helps uh, Officer uh, Ernie inside and immediately starts sucking his leg. <laughs> uh, yeah, she she sucks the poison out. Yeah, and uh, just want you to know, everybody, she does in fact swallow. <laughs> well, you know, you don't you don't waste an opportunity with Ernie. You got to make the most of it. <laughs> she loves venom. 
Yeah. Uh, they have a fun conversation. It's great. She's not suspicious at all. Uh, this <laughs> yeah. was the the beginning of a, just a, a tirade of double entendres on her from her character. <laughs> I think this movie would have been 30 minutes without the double entendres, <laughs> but that's most British things. <clears throat> yeah. This is almost a carry-on movie. <laughs> <laughs> carry-on screaming, too. Yeah, or excuse carry me. Carry-on carry hissing. S- screaming carry on hissing i love it <laughs> oh my god hissing and kissing <laughs> thank you <laughs> uh so the next morning um our, our friend uh sylvia here she goes to see because she knows all about this skull that has been found in this archaeology dig and uh she goes to angus and um mary's place i think actually it's eve and mary's place angus is just mm-hmm. rooming with them mm-hmm. and uh, she she checks out the hole she checks out angus's hole <laughs> and then she just walks right in the house and starts snooping around mm-hmm. very important she uh she finds the skull she fondles it and then she freaking steals it yeah. and then she spits on jesus Spits on a crucifix that's hanging on the wall of this bed and breakfast. Uh, But while she's doing so, I mean, she has long snake fangs and she's spitting like, well, almost vomiting venom. Uh, So it's at this point, if we hadn't figured it out already, she might be a snake woman. (laughs) You might be a snake woman if. Uh, I love this. This to me feels like a throwback to Hammer. I mean, there's a Mm, lot of throwbacks to just. You know, just horror tropes in general. But this one, these impractically long fangs yeah. is like classic uh, vampire cinema crapola that I always think is so funny when you watch these movies. Yeah. Hammer, Hammer turned up to like 13.5. Yes. That's what this is. There, there's a great moment as she's leaving. Um, like you'd, you'd think you'd end the scene with her just spitting on the crucifix like that's good enough but no she goes out and she puts the worm skull on the seat of her car and we just linger on it for a moment and I love that because it's kind of like the, the worm skull is her co-pilot <laughs> I have that bumper sticker <laughs> yeah, so uh, our pal James Hugh Grant and uh, sister Eve uh, they get back from the party and they bar- apparently partied all night mm-hmm. at that freaking party. It is dawn and they're back. And of course, she's shocked by the, the watch discovery. There's a note from her sister. So she's like, oh my God, my parents. And this kills uh, Hugh Grant's chances of getting laid. He's like, oh, you're thinking about your dead parents now. I guess I got a bail, bro. <laughs> they were about to do Netflix and chill. He should have just taken the Angus approach and just gone for it. Oh, you're feeling... You're feeling awful about all these dead people in your life? Come here, give me a give me a hiss and a kiss. I guess it would have been uh, Channel Four and chill. <laughs> Come on. Uh, so hey, British jokes. So uh, she is going upstairs and she notices the the freaking uh, snake phlegm all over her statue of Jesus, her crucifix on the wall, statue of Jesus. Sure. And uh, she touches the venom to see what it is and immediately goes into what I'm calling a Ken Russell film. (laughs) We see a dude getting crucified. We see nuns getting raped uh, by some Roman soldiers. And of course, our snaky snake vampire lady (laughs) is enjoying herself immensely. Immensely, yeah. Oh my God. And the snake's there too. Did you mention the snake? Oh yeah, the, the big white worm is wrapped around the, the gentleman being crucified. Yeah. And it, this is all jarring for multiple reasons. Mainly, it's because this whole film is filmed on film. Yeah. This whole sequence is shot on video with uh, lots of crazy uh, effects going and like in front of a blue screen. Yeah. yeah. And it is uh, just chroma key from hell. <laughs> I love it. The Romans now on video cassette. <laughs> God. Oh, man. Like, you wonder, like, because this came out during the video nasty era, and I'm wondering if Ken Russell was like, you know, if I keep the movie really sedate and, and not too crazy in the beginning, yeah. maybe I can sneak this in while the censors have dozed off and <laughs> yes. won't freak out. Because yeah. um, I, I don't think this ran into any trouble with... I'm not, I'm not familiar with it running into trouble like that. Mm. I, I almost feel like probably all of the imagery is is too brief as well 
Like, yeah. I think it's cut down kind of to the bone here and just like little flashes that, you know, those those old biddies at the uh, at the what BBFC just they didn't even know what they right. were seeing. Yeah. And also they didn't the poster art wasn't like, you know, gruesome in an obvious way. So right. there wasn't, you know, man of the chainsaw. Right. When James comes back in to check on her, uh, he notices uh, I believe he helps her downstairs uh, so that she's not, you know, having a fit on the floor. And then they notice that the watch now has a snake, like a snake's head and a tail instead of hands. It's like, woo, that's custom, <laughs> custom job. They, they look and then there's a Funko pop of the snake just sitting there. <laughs> wow, that trended really fast. I love it. It's good branding. Yeah, so he asks her about the snake that she saw. It's like, wait, did you say it was a white snake? And he's like, yes. And she's like, the band? And he's like, yes, White Snake, the band. <laughs> Insert whatever White Snake reference here. I don't remember any of their songs. Do you remember the song, The Dampton Worm? That was <laughs> oh, like one right. of the best White Snake songs. <laughs> but uh, he shows her what else has been uncovered in the archaeology hole, which is a little tile floor, tile, like a little um, whatever you call it. I don't remember my archaeology. <laughs> But it's got a literal white snake like wrapped around uh, a pole or a crucifix or something. One of my favorite quotes of the film comes at this moment uh, where I believe it is. Yeah, it's James who says this to um, Eve. He says, uh, it's just a mosaic. It can't harm you. <laughs> How wrong. How wrong. Yeah, dead Mosaics wrong. are dangerous. Thank you for remembering <laughs> the word mosaic. You're so I, I couldn't think of it. It was gone. Yeah. We cut to the rain where, where it's, it's, it's raining. And uh, we see a hitchhiker, a little Eagle Scout, hitchhiking in the rain. And uh, this is Kev. <laughs> this poor kid uh, gets picked up by, of course, Lady Sylvia. <laughs> and um, who claims that she's snake watching in the rain, which is great. <laughs> this, the most inclement weather for snakes would be, of course, like, what is this October in England or whenever this is oh, this it's apparently spring. That's what she says, but I don't believe it. Oh, what? Based on what I've seen of the great British baking show, it rains and is miserable at the beginning of spring. Mm, there you go. They have this whole sequence where she's seducing him and it is so wrong. How <laughs> do we know how old this kid was? This is messed up, dude. I, I don't know how old the actor was, but I would say high teens, early 20s. Let's hope it was leaning towards the 20s. So yeah. she's, she's, um, they, they place uh, snakes and ladders. He's in the bathrobe and she's in this ornate freaking uh, lingerie Long giant. Airy. Yeah. Yes. Freaking vinyl or just like shiny leather boots and a, uh, a nice, uh, uh, negligee yeah a sheer of. negligee yeah. <laughs> they're playing snakes and ladders which apparently is a game yeah it's like shoots and ladder i think the original shoots and ladders is snakes and ladders if i'm Whoa. not mistaken i don't think it looks quite as cool as this board does probably not yeah chances are the production designer was like i can make one of those uh -huh. and uh he starts playing his harmonica and very important <laughs> she can't resist the charms of a harmonica, that, which is uh, my least favorite instrument on earth. <laughs> Ugh. I, I love all of the scenes where she's being snake charmed. Um, I love the way that she sort of s s swivels back and forth, almost like she kind of like swaggers and strokes her hip. It's an insane approximation of how a, uh, a charmed snake would act. I love it. <laughs> uh, she gets him in the bath. And uh, then while she's washing him down, uh, she bites him in an undisclosed location. And uh, she, <laughs> while, while he's paralyzed, uh, she explains how lucky he is to be sacrificed to her god, uh, the god Dio Dionin. Mm. I believe it's Dionin. They only say it nine oh, yeah, times. Oh, yeah, Dionin. And uh, so the problem is she needs virgins. And um, we're going to go ahead and guess that Kev is a virgin. Uh, but then there's a ring, at uh, the doorbell rings. And uh, she's like, ah, all right, I'm going to spare you a horrifying death by drowning you in the bathtub. <laughs> she has another great line here where she, as he's paralyzed, she says, you're a vegetable, metaphorically, of course, but God is not a vegetarian. 
Oh boy. Um, I don't know if that's a quote from Oscar Wilde, but of course, uh, one of Ken Russell's big inspirations for this, a mm. lot of this dialogue is from uh, our pal, our friend and yours, Oscar Wilde. I, lo- I love this idea of blending Wilde and Stoker together to make uh, this lovely piece of cinema. I think it's <laughs> honestly brilliant. It's like like Steinbeck and, uh, I don't know, what's his name? Who's the guy who wrote Naked Lunch? Uh, Burroughs. <laughs> yeah, Burroughs and Steinbeck together again. I love it. <laughs> it's James, our, our pal, Lord James, ringing the doorbell. And um, he thought he was bringing the double entendres but oh no (laughs) lady sylvia uh, proceeds to bury him alive (laughs) under many many double entendres he finds her sense of humor not so hot she makes a joke about the missing people the missing uh, trents the mary and eve's parents and he doesn't like it so she totally passive aggressively changes the conversation to her needing comforting she bursts into fake ass tears Mm -hmm. and talks about when she was 10 years old um she was bitten by a snake that put her into a coma for 10 days and also what a trying time she's had coming home and and the the cop getting bitten by snake traumatized her and of course um ever the gentleman he tries to comfort her (laughs) in order to help her cope this is a very strange scene in order to help her cope with her her uh her conquering her fears of snakes quote unquote her fear of snakes she burns her snakes and ladders and says rosebud <laughs> that was maybe my favorite joke in the movie because it's played oh. totally straight he's like what and she's like nothing nothing <laughs> uh then she lays a big old kiss on james and i wrote ew ew Lady Sylvia, you do not know where he's been. <laughs> do not get on that Hugh Grant. You got to get your lips uh, waxed. I don't know. I don't know what you do. <laughs> Kiss his little unibrow. Oh, bless him. It's before his stylist. He before he had his own stylist. Mm-hmm. They can't all be as good as ours. It's true. So we cut to James at home watching some weird worm-based science. Uh, science. Some weird worm-based silent films. I love that he just has those in his personal archive. Of course, of course. And uh, he's he's dozing off in bed and staring at the uh, portrait of his ancestor uh, slaying the snake. And then um, as he's drifting off, the knight and the snake disappear and it becomes just the hole. And it, it dreams of himself walking into the hole. And then there's a plane inside, an airplane, because of course he's in the, the, the Air Force. And he... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he goes up in the plane. There's a very helpful stewardess, and I believe the stewardess, or excuse me, flight attendants, um, are played by, I think it's Eve and Mary, yeah. but Mary's the main one. Yeah. He's he's sitting on the on the plane doing a snake crossword puzzle, and of course Sylvia is also one of the uh, the flight attendants, and uh, <laughs> she's giving a service to the comatose uh, parents of Eve and Mary uh, by serving them drinks. They're strapped to their chairs. And when she tries to do this to James, uh, her and (laughs) Mary get into a fight. And one of the other uh, recurrent themes in this movie are thigh-high stockings and uh, the the garter belts. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of garters going everywhere. These skirts are way too short for any practical use. Yeah, they are are all out wrestling on the ground uh, of this very, (laughs) very large and spacious uh, uh, aircraft. Yes, and uh, James is watching this while he's tied up and he still has his pen, his little marker (laughs) that he was using to do the crossword puzzle and it starts to flick in the air as he watches the girls wrestle as i wrote his pen boner <laughs> yep it starts rising slowly into attention mm-hmm. and now he's in a cave finding the watch and then his noisy servant one of my favorite characters in this movie uh, his butler starts buttling and wakes him up from the dream now i want you to understand listeners uh None of that was metaphorical. It all actually happened. <laughs> yeah, Mary's still mad at him for his pen boner. Yep. Yep. For years. 
years, we had a love affair. Then we found out the butter we loved had cholesterol. But now hearts are soaring once again as people are discovering the fresh butter taste of... I can't believe it's not butter. I can't believe it's not butter is the only spread flavored with sweet cream buttermilk, so it really tastes like butter, but without the cholesterol to spoil the romance. I can't believe it's not butter. I never thought it could be this good again. I can't believe it's not butter, the taste you love without the cholesterol. So uh, that's when James looks at the portrait and notices that the cavern in the photo, uh, cavern in the, uh, bleh, let me start that over. Um, his his butler hands in the newspaper where it shows a photo of Mary and Angus and all of them doing the uh, the rescue mission. And there's the cavern with the, the cavern. Oh my God. <sighs> uh, the, the old hole in the mountain is behind them. And he realizes that it's the same one that uh, his ancestors slayed the worm in. Hopefully I can patch that sentence together to make sense. Do you need to take off your sweater? Because your shoulders got really big. They got No, that's just my shoulders now. Yeah, I, okay. I need to take it off. Give me Go one second. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you looked really comfortable. Got hot looked, in here. You made me all hot. I, I hope so. I'm sweating too. I must be Florida. <laughs> yep. So um, he's like, whoa, dude, that's a coinkadink. And... <laughs> yeah, he really put that one together. Oh, there's going to be a lot of that in this movie. There's lots of uh, finding all the clues. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the hole. And this is when Mary, Angus, Eve, and James go to the freaking, the legendary Dampton hole. And uh, there's a lot of dialogue. Mm -hmm. this, is a, this is a dialogue dump moment. But the most important part is they talk about the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> uh, Mary and Eve have sandwiches. While uh, James and Angus go exploring and they find a cave drawing with a big boner. And they, they talk about hermaphrodites. <laughs> and they theorize that this is how the, um, the worm keeps perpetuating itself because it's, uh, it's impregnating itself. Oh, my I God. Think. That's, it's a brilliant uh, uh, trick of evolution. Yep. It's just like The Bad Place by Dean Arkuntz. Oops, is that a spoiler? Probably. Oh, no. So they argue about looking at an underground uh, spring and the girls, they, he, he makes a joke that the girl's parents were eaten by a freaking worm. And that's not funny. LOL. <laughs> and then everyone except Eve goes exploring. So Eve walks home alone uh, through the forest and she runs into Sylvia mm -hmm. stuck in a tree. <laughs> and this is my favorite of her outfits. This is the coolest mm. freaking like, faux leather ensemble like i don't know what but she i'm guessing her coloration is supposed to be that of a tree snake it's kind of orange mm. and brown yeah it's pretty freaking cool oh, god super chillers man you guys are making me pay attention to outfits hey listen great. they're a very important part of this the scenery building <laughs> we never credit the the seamsters no they, they work with the teamsters the, the seamster teamsters yeah <laughs> Uh, she, uh, Eve immediately gets hypnotized by our pal Sylvia. And then they're back at her house and the, uh, probably the most iconic moment from the trailers certainly is, uh, our pal Sylvia in a tanning bed mm -hmm. and she is, uh, she commands Eve to disrobe, but not too much. No, 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 no. You could still wear a long shirt that covers up everything. I'm going to be no, totally right. naked though. I'm tanning. <laughs> Sylvia waves a big giant pointy uh, fang at her. Uh, this is her. This is her fang phallus that we'll be seeing a lot of later. Mm -hmm. And then she talks some smack about Jesus and about how Eve's been reincarnated. She's known all these old souls for the hundreds of years that she's been alive, and um, he recognizes Eve's soul as one of the nuns. At the, uh, the in the flashback, yeah, way back. Oh boy, uh, she talks about she needs a virgin, needs a virgin, a she needs a virgin to sacrifice to Dionin, and then she commands Eve to <laughs> call and give herself an alibi or whatever, so she can just disappear and her friends won't notice. And the call is very suspicious sounding <laughs> to her sister, and it gets even more so when. Um, Eve's crucifix ring that she's staring at um, helps break the spell, and she just yells, Dionin! Dionin! <laughs> and then Sylvia spits venom on her, and we have yet another cray-cray vision that's just, it's just more insanity. Mary obviously knows something is wrong, 
And this is when uh, James starts to piece things together, like the old Agatha Christie talking. Mm, yep. Which, uh, according to some of the trivia, um, Ken Russell really did want this to be a mystery film. Yeah. Like, he really wanted this to be a whodunit, but as he called it, a what done it. Yeah, that really doesn't make sense to me, because we know all along exactly <laughs> so what's <cute>. going on. <laughs> it's so adorable. He's like, did you watch Tommy? That was a pin done it ball. I don't know. I have no idea. No, that w- that actually was a who done it. <laughs> hey, that's good. Thank you. <laughs> that's quadrophini. I don't know. James uh commands his servant uh to his 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 man servant to uh, set up a loudspeaker on top of their the manor house. <laughs> And play some snake charmer music. And I wrote in my notes, this conversation is fucking crazy. <laughs> oh my god, who is this butler, man? I gotta I gotta look. I love the idea of him because we see a shot of the big red speakers on top of the, the manor. And I just love the idea of that servant like waddling out there to to set those up and somehow not falling to his death. It's just so incredible. This is this actor, I believe, is Stratford Johns. He's uh, another one of these super prolific dudes. Mm. Uh, One hundred and twenty-two credits in everything, uh, but he is like, <laughs> he's so excited about um, the music and it's like <laughs> describing. I'll, I'll probably have this dialogue as the opening to this episode because I love it so much. And then when uh, James commands him to lock up the chambermaids. But unlock the front door. Our our pal uh, looks very excited. Like lock up the chambermaids. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> the music totally works. They start playing this slinky ass music, and Sylvia, who apparently sleeps in a basket, <laughs> she shimmies out of it all all snake like, and immediately starts heading towards the manor house. Uh, <laughs> while she's distracted, uh, Angus and Mary sneak into her house and start looking for Eve. They notice the the bust of the uh, that that famous Roman emperor <laughs> that apparently is so obscure that no one should have a bust of him. He was too rogue for even historians. Yes, uh, they find a stuffed mongoose around a stuffed cobra, the natural enemy of the snake. That's right. Uh, the the source novel for this book is like obsessed with with mongoose. And they are constantly, like, unleashed around this countryside to deal with the snake problem. Oh and uh, the character who's kind of like Sylvia Marsh in that novel, she doesn't have the same name, but she's basically the same character, uh, like, <laughs> will, like, stalk and kill the mon- the mongoose. She, like, rips them in half with her hands. Whoa. Yeah, we don't see that in this movie, though. Oh, no, that'd be a little, that'd be a fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah. So why don't we see it in this movie, actually? <laughs> Good point. They couldn't afford. They they used all the effects budget on the fangs. Mm, true. So they find a woman, you know, in a room with nothing but a television. She's just watching TV. There's a snake dancer on TV, uh, dancing with a big old python. It's uh, mom. It's freaking Mary and Eve's mom, and uh, she vamping. She freaking uh, literally vamping. Yeah. Uh, she bites Mary on the neck and then takes off. When uh, freaking Angus tries to help her, Angus uh, <laughs> sucks the poison out, but not before Mary has visions. Again, more of these crazy visions. Angus is also nice enough just not to spit the poison on the ground. He he goes and puts it in a cup. Thank you for <laughs> catching that. I forgot to write that down. He He's like running around with the snake venom in his mouth like, oh, what do I do? And then he gets a freaking brandy glass and spits it in there. And I'm like, wow, very polite. Well, Very see, polite. that's how I took it at first, but I think later on we figure out that he did that because he wanted it to be analyzed so they could have an anti Good call. Yeah. Good call. That's even smarter than me. <laughs> so uh, this is when Dampton House gets attacked by, by, we presume it's Sylvia. She kills the, the butler and she's running around inside there. But then it turns out to be mom. Vamp and mom is here. And we get this awesome sequence where true to his uh, his ancestor james grabs the big old sword which is almost as big as he is yes swings cuts her in half and then falls on a drum set (laughs) 
fucking Kurt Cobain style, and I can only wince. Like, I've never fallen on a drum set. I have, like, misstepped while trying to set up a drum set uh-huh. and, like, partially cracked my knee on part of the uh, the snare drum setup. It hurts. I imagine. Yeah. It's not a fun thing to fall on. And it's even harder to get up once you've oh. done something that's stupid. <laughs> uh, Kurt Cobain is in one of the most famous bands, Soundgarden. And they would fly <laughs> in with a helicopter and airlift him off of the freaking drum set. He would just freeze up and wait. <laughs> You've seen that from a Lollapalooza video. Yeah, yeah. You know, if he moved, he probably would have died. <laughs> Got glad he's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the the slice in half, I love. I love the gore. It's so great. Uh, they and really go for she's it. She's not even dead after. She keeps oh. on like crawling around. The legs kick in. You, you go. They have an actress. You know, in yeah. the, two actresses. One, mm-hmm. you know, her buried buried up to her torso in the flooring, and then you have. Of course, someone in uh, thigh-high stockings and a <laughs> garter belt kicking her legs like she's in pain. It's oh, it's so fun. Uh, the next morning, uh, Mary gets picked up by our cop pal, um, and he is seriously not suspicious as hell. But he needs her to uh, come to the house and identify the body of her sliced-in-half mother. He says as he licks his teeth. Yes. <laughs> N- nothing nothing wrong with that guy he's always like that mm-hmm. so at the manor she sees that he's been wounded and she's like oh shit this isn't good and then uh, he gives chase and she gets c- cornered in a little uh like underground tunnel thing by a big old i'm guessing some kind of a python i'm just gonna keep saying python because i don't know snakes i think it's a python yeah but so she's she's trapped between the snake and the frying pan which is the you know, the, the, the cop who's snaky boy with the fangs. And then we hear the other greatest instrument that ever existed, bagpipes. Oh, yeah. You put a Scotsman in the film and he doesn't blow on those pipes. <laughs> you just, you, you screwed up. And Ken you're, Russell, you're wasted. Yeah, he you doesn't wasted screw the up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. This is so much fun. I love this whole sequence. Um, our, our pal cop Ernie is like slinking to the freaking music and uh angus is moving those bagpipes back and forth and and uh charming his ass <laughs> my, my, my favorite part about his performance here um uh this is ernie's performance that is is how he like really hates that he's being charmed by it yes. um, and he's like fighting against it but he just can't he can't he can't stop He's not quite. Um, <laughs> he's not quite got that same hip stroking swagger as uh, as Lady Sylvia does when she is uh, being charmed. But uh, I, I like that he gives a go of it. Nevertheless, Dude, he he's, he sways a little bit. I bet she coached him. I bet she coached him. <laughs> There's a long thing where she's coaching him on it. It'd be great. That's in the Blu-ray extras. Watch it. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> finally, Angus runs out of breath and has to push. Ernie over and Ernie falls on a freaking sundial, goes right through his head, Oof. and it pops his eye out, which of course, um, you know, using a, a an actor's glass eye to great effect. I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so good. Before he confronts Sylvia, our pal uh, Angus thinks he's so smart. He does two things, one of which is amazing. First, he injects himself with something. We don't know what he injected himself with. Like, hmm, what's he doing? But then he releases the cutest little mongoose. <laughs> oh, my God. I did not really know what a mongoose looked like other than in the stuffed version mm-hmm. and in, like, photo- like, I guess not photographs, but, like, drawings of them. They are so freaking cute. <laughs> they sure are. Oh and they God. hate snakes. They just <clears throat> hate them. Yes. So he... He lets the mongoose go in the house and it, Sylvia comes running out and attacks freaking Angus and ha 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 ha. She had earplugs in. God damn it. Does this movie not know, how, like it doesn't know how earplugs work? <laughs> Cause earplugs, you still hear. Well, she, she had the earplugs in, then she was going la 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 la. Oh, la, right, right. La. I can't That's hear the trick. you. Yep, yep. Nanny, nanny, boo, boo. <laughs> So uh, down in her her cavernous basement, after she bites Angus, she takes him downstairs for to guess to be a snack later. I don't know. He's definitely not a virgin. 
<laughs> Peter Peter Capaldi, come on, no way. I don't know. We're to- he tells us early in the film when he's invited to uh, uh, Lord Dampton's party. He goes, "What party? No one's invited me to a party ever." <laughs> what a nerd! That's what happens when you wear your knit fingerless gloves to a party. Ah, those are pretty cool, though. Yeah, but those are for uh, anthropologizing. It's for... too late. <laughs> it's too late to anthropologize. <laughs> too late. <laughs> well, I'm glad I got to make that joke after I thought of that like a decade ago when that song came out. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> so she has Mary and Eve tied up. Um, Eve, of course, is more special because she's in her underpants. And <laughs> there's a giant pit in the basement with, of course, some kind of a snock, a snocky. A, a hisser, a little worm down in that thing. Uh, but she's preparing the ritual. And on the other end, back at the old hole, Dampton Hole, James and his crew um, are getting the poison gas ready to pump through there. Uh, Sylvia puts on her strap on. <laughs> yep. Which the human a... sacrificial cod piece. Oh, my God. That thing looks gnarly, dude. I'm not yeah. ready for that. <laughs> Yeah. We need to do a safe word before we start that action. The movie, the movie also isn't ready for it because then she just goes like, "Oh, uh, no, what? What's the line? It's like no time for ceremony." Yes, something like that. Just Let's time. do the ritual. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Skip to the ritual or something, and she takes it off. So maybe, maybe Ken Russell's like, uh, "Maybe <laughs> we better not go there, just in case." <laughs> the giant uh, worm is coming. It's going rah 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 rah. And down in his little hole, it's so cute. <laughs> the the worm is not a great special effect. It looks like um, kind of like one of the Beetlejuice sandworms. Um, it's yes. kind of cartoonish looking, but I think that adds to it. I think it's appropriate. Oh. I wouldn't want a realistic one there. Right, right. So she she dangles Eve over the the, the hole there and starts cutting the rope on her wrist. And that's when uh, <laughs> Angus gets up. And he pushes Sylvia in, but she grabs onto Eve's ankle at the last moment. And then he has to cut off Sylvia's hand in order to get her to uh, fall into her own worm's mouth. The worm eating its own tail. Yep. That's very, very appropriate. Poetic. (laughs) I love it. Uh, so Angus frees uh, Eve and uh, Mary and gets them to run out while he throws a grenade. <laughs> the ancestral has... grenade. Yeah. Yes, he. Uh, if you're a Monty Python fan, it's it's the holy hand grenade. <laughs> and so he takes it out of his pouch, which here's Lietta, Lietta's contribution to the notes here. Mm. It's called a sporin. Oh. Yeah. And so he had a, a little grenade in his sporin, but he blows up the snake in what is the funniest, like, brah, brah, effect of the movie. It looks so dumb. <laughs> they immediately fade out as the explosion's happening. They just toss a bunch of, quote-unquote, snake guts <laughs> through the hole. It's so cute how they were like, <laughs> like, we didn't have the money to make this look impressive, so let's just move on. The, the budget of this film was a meager $2 million. They, oh stre- they stretched God. it. Oh my god. So, more exposition from uh, our pal James and Angus. They're super smart guys. Uh, They're both, you know, battle-scarred. Although, you know, Angus is battle-scarred. James is just kind of dirty and playing in a hole. (laughs) And uh, they get in the car, or he's getting in the car, and just before uh, he joins him, Angus gets a call from the lab. And it is a, a helpful lab assistant who is telling him, oh, by the way, we gave you the wrong serum. Hope that wasn't important. So instead of a anti-snake venom uh, serum, she gave him a serum that helps with arthritis, (laughs) which is how he was able to get unparalyzed from the snake bite, which is, this is just great. But um, he he was still, uh, you know, getting vamped. And that's when uh, we see him start to, like, change right before our eyes into a bad guy. Oh. I, I, me too, dude. Me too. And James uh, offers, let's stop and get a bite of food. but And don't bite me, freshly vampired friend. 
<laughs> but then he sees that Angus has been bitten and he gets a oh, like no. a <laughs> dong, 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 look. <laughs> and then the movie is over. <laughs> but that you mean he gets a boner and then it's it's the end of the film. <laughs> he gets a, he gets a fang. I too was very sad that this didn't have a totally goofy happy ending. Like I didn't want that stinger horror ending, but yeah. we got it and I wouldn't change it obviously. No. Especially it was... because there like there are no big worm gods left, presumably. Right. Cuz they just blew it up and then poison gas the rest of the the place. So like they're just going to be snake vampire people wandering the world without a purpose <clears throat> which is you know that's what the sequel is going to be about if it ever gets made yeah ken russell's dracula yeah <laughs> he'll be crowdfunding it probably from, uh, from yeah, beyond th yeah that's the movie we get the re the reprise of the song the reprise of the uh dampton worm song oh yeah by irish clash so good you need it twice <laughs> uh let's see um what's some other trivia uh this was a big flop in terms of um mm -hmm. of a uh, box office nobody went and saw this thing it only made like a million dollars or mm -hmm. one one five but i think it was probably a huge hit on vhs probably which it is how i saw it back in the day i remember uh seeing this covered in maybe that this is horror tv show i watched that mtv played the stephen king's world of horror because i definitely rented this on purpose because i knew vaguely what it was about mm -hmm. it's because... interesting that the vhs uh, presented as a comedy too right? yes it's, as it's hysterical <laughs> yeah but i feel like that's probably not how the original advertisements for it went um and they no. probably because they wanted a horror movie so they probably presented it as a horror movie and then they changed course when it maybe didn't do so well uh, Russell insists this film was a comedy. <laughs> he's like, he's like, people just don't get the joke. And I'm like, love ya. <laughs> Russell complains about the special effects. They take forever to do. And uh, he had two crews shooting simultaneously on different sound stages. And he just said it was... Oh, wait, he said... <laughs> One shooting on the shrine set with Catherine Oxenberg about to be sacrificed to the worm, while the other was filming a convent of nuns about to be raped by a legion of centurions. <laughs> Never a dull moment. Uh, I mean, yeah. Pretty much. Uh. <laughs> the mouth of the white worm seen in the tunnel towards the end of the movie was actually a painted over Volkswagen Beetle hood that bears an uncanny resemblance to the mouth of a snake. <laughs> what? Really? Yep. That's wild. Yep. Uh, the Hitchhiking Boy Scout is a reference to an episode of The Avengers. The uh, episode, The House That Jack Built from 1966. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's another director cameo. When uh, they're out front at the beginning of the film, uh, Ken Russell walks by with a friend and waves and says, Hello, Mary. Oh, nice. I remember them. So yeah, dude, obviously we thank our pal Holly for picking this episode. Um, but uh, how do you feel about the layer of the white layer worm? Worm. Well, uh, uh, one very, very healthy, robust worm up is what I'm going <laughs> to say. I love this movie. Um, it's a great one. Uh, I feel like it, it, it does feel quite a bit different than rest, the rest of Ken Russell's filmography, which I feel like sometimes carries a similar tone but isn't quite so stripped down and maybe unambitious as this movie is like this definitely feels like something he was just getting through contractually um but he still brings quite a bit to it uh and it feels incredibly like one of his movies uh and it's got such a fun uh a fun little world a little slice of the english countryside that it creates and populates with these fun characters who are i think pretty well written um the screenplay is credited just to ken russell and i think he has a lot of fun with it um again the dialogue is very quick and fast and uh quite humorous um i love the blending of wild and stoker uh such a weird choice but i think it kind of plays off perfectly here um as we talked about the performances i think are great um particularly from hugh grant and amanda Dondaho. uh i love it great film uh highly recommend richard how do you feel I am also really into this. Uh, I would like to watch this more often. This is, I think, I watched this once with Lietta 
definitely over a decade ago. Mm -hmm. And so I think I should just freaking make this <laughs> a more regular watch. For sure. It is so – I definitely don't ever want to take notes on it ever again. <laughs> but it's like typically outrageous for Ken Russell. He, he never never did anything normal, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, not really. Even the normal ones are weird. Right? All the horror tropes are mocked and sent up in a very loving manner. If he was being mean, it certainly doesn't come across. No. No. Um, the, the the score, I would buy this on vinyl in a heartbeat. This is uh, yeah, it's really Stanislas good. Sirovich, mm -hmm. I believe that's how you say his name, That's or Sirovics, um, did not do much horror, but he's been consistently working um, for several years. He was uh, born in Russia, and that might explain his name. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Maybe. yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, but, dude, this score is... I almost thought he, <laughs> I thought he did uh, the com in the company of wolves for a second, but it's uh, in the company of whales. Whales, those are yeah. slightly different creatures. <laughs> so close, both both covered in fur. Um, wow, yeah, this, the score is so good. Um, there are moments where it kind of reminded me of um, uh, roughly around this period, a little bit later, of like uh, Angelo Badalamenti. Like there yes. are some Twin Peaksy moments in Dude, it. Dude, yes. Um, um, I was I was getting like a, a little bit of a late '80s Italian horror vibe too. For sure. Um, my my sharp intake of breath a moment ago was me imagining like a giant hair covered whale, like if whales were hairy. Wow. How cute that would be. Wow. Or terrifying. What it, uh, imagine? Imagine if dinosaurs had feathers. Oh my god. No. So um, I love the UK humor, the, the freaking the Britishness of this is like piled so high. I adore it. Um, it's just a pretty film. As mentioned before, our pal Dick Bush filmed it so well. This is just yeah, gorgeous stuff. The gore is incredible. It's not overly gory, but the bits that are gory are freaking great. Mm hmm cast is wonderful and yeah i am really glad that we got to cover this yeah it's a very different one for us but i think it's still it's like on the perimeter of our wheelhouse absolutely i wish this had taken off in italy and they'd done a, 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 a oh. sequel to it an unofficial <laughs> sequel or several because you know they never they never did anything but do too many sequels in italy so <laughs> layers of the white worm and the uh, s is a dollar sign yeah. yeah. Imagine uh freaking Bruno Matai or uh or what's what's that other dude? Uh Claudio Fergasso getting confused oh. by the humor and trying to make jokes. Oh no. And they'd film it in Utah with like all local <laughs> actors. <laughs> but they'd still pretend it's England. Yes, and make them do British accents. <laughs> Woo. Well folks, thanks so much for listening. Jeffrey, thank you for joining me. Thank you, Richard. Dude, folks, get off your high horses and your high knees, or just, you know, sit up and reach for your mouse or your cellular phone and check out Super Chillers. I cannot recommend it enough. I also cannot recommend it. It's bad for your health. That's right. <laughs> no, I can I can not recommend it enough. I just said I think I said enough. I know. I just Or I just it. I just don't recommend it. <laughs> don't twist my words. <laughs> Get off your high horse and onto your white worm. <laughs> Get on the worm and ride it. Hiss, hiss. <laughs> oh my god, let's stop. Let's stop it. I can't stop that. Bye, folks. This is the Doom Show is a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Please check out the other podcasts on legionpodcasts.com. If you'd like more Hello, This is the Doom Show, go to hellodoomshow.podomatic.com or go to doomedmoviethon.com for the archives. If that's still not enough, go to at doomedmoviethon on Twitter. You can write in to Hello This Is The Doom Show. Use the email doomedmoviethon at gmail.com. Doom Show episodes are available on record and 8-track cassette.